I am fascinated by William and Kate's behind the scenes video, which uh, we saw a few seconds of and then the full 10 minutes in the past few days. What I'm particularly interested in and particularly uh, keen to talk about with you is the visual language of it. Now we know that way back when there was only ever sort of one camera and things were rather stiff and then there's sort of been the compromise of the uh, behind the scenes lengthy documentary. But this was shot and was full of a very informal series of moments. And it seems to have been absolutely pitched at a section of the community that this is what they expect when they watch a video about the insider life of, uh, of a royal. What did you think of the, the video production, the way that this was overtly meant to look informal and was pitched very young? Absolutely, and, and bang on the money. They are Hollywood casting. They look good, they sound good. Uh, they say all the right things. They're very progressive. And as I said earlier, they've got three beautiful, uh, very well brought up, I know that for a fact, and freshly normal young children. I'm sure you saw in the Eurovision thing, the, um, the uh, princess playing the piano. We didn't have enough of it. It was about 10 seconds. But unconsciously there, or consciously, she's a great admirer of the late Diana, Princess of Wales. And, and what she was channeling there was something that happened in Melbourne in 1988. The, the Princess uh, of Wales, as she then was, was with, with Prince Charles. And they went to the Conservatoire of Music and the director rather ambushed her rather cheekily. And he said, well, will you play the piano? So she went over with her handbag. She put the handbag on the floor and she sat behind this grand piano. And she got into about eight or nine bars of uh, the second uh, Rachmaninoff piano concerto, which is not easy to do. And then she sort of more or less ran out of steam and ran out, uh, was slightly embarrassed by it all. And then the, the direct, director gave her a big kiss on the cheek, which was also quite cheeky. But in a way, uh, what Kate is doing, uh, she is very clever. And all the photographs you see of the family, of the children, they're rather good pictures because they know the photographer. The photographer is their mother. Uh, this is a visual medium. You're on a visual medium. So am I. She realizes the world today, people aren't reading newspapers. Young people aren't reading newspapers. They're on their, their, they're on their devices all the time. They're looking at television. They're looking at images. And of course, it's well done. I'm not saying it's calculated. I just think it's a clever way of communicating because they haven't put a foot wrong since they, they, they got together. Uh, and there was a long apprenticeship there. I mean, they were together seven or eight years before they got married. But the key to it is, Paul, the key to it is they love each other. And that is something which you can't buy and you can't guarantee because Prince William was the first royal prince who was allowed to have a free choice in his uh, spouse. He chose a, a woman who grew up not knowing that she would one day become a queen, which she may do in due course, uh, and a princess. And it's worked out very well. She was a bit hesitant at front at the first, but she doesn't put a foot wrong. She grows it with more confidence as each, uh, uh, each engagement. And of course, I think they're coming your way fairly soon. You will see she doesn't take a bad picture. And I think she's a very good person. You see the way she works with people. It's genuine. You can't fake that. Well, you can fake it for a bit. You can't fake it every single time. And she does. And that truth comes through. And he's very, very sincere about his, what he's doing. Very sincere indeed. He, he committed to it. I mean, after the terrible, terrible death of his mother, uh, both he and his brother questioned their royal roles. But, but Prince William decided that he was going to be the dutiful one. Uh, and Prince Harry obviously took a different course. Well, yeah, who knew that the uh, boy who was born to be king would find a way to marry up, but he has in terms of uh, personality with uh, with Catherine and, and her near perfection in the way that she's uh, carrying out the role, which does create a pressure in and of itself. But also the, the, that little piano moment, I thought, was also evocative of what was declared by the Baptists to be one of the TV moments of the year, which was, of course, during the Jubilee when Paddington sat down with the late Queen uh, it reminds me a little bit of Brian May on the on the, the the roof of Buckingham Palace. Just these little moments 
are the things that actually start to wedge you to these people, start to wedge you to the organisation. So well played all round uh, for anyone involved. Michael, lovely to talk to you. Fantastic. It wasn't. It, it was terrific, but it will never beat the Queen and Paddington Bear. That was the best ever, and it won an award, and quite rightly, Paul, like you've done. Absolutely, just a star all the way to the end. All the best to you, mate. Talk soon, and enjoy a marmalade sandwich.